Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the town board meeting for Tuesday, September 8th, 2020. We have a couple of announcements, uh, the supervisor's report at the top of the meeting. So I will pull that up and then launch into that. Um, so in terms of the latest uh, COVID data for Westchester, um, that was released today. Um, we see a little bit of a increase um, in terms of our local numbers um, on the Westchester County map. We currently have eight active cases in the town of Newcastle, and this is the most active cases that we've had since the uh, Horace Greeley High School graduation cluster uh, that we experienced back at the end of June. Um, we expected this sort of as vacations were starting to wrap up and people were going to drop off uh, kids at college and school came back in session, uh, we knew that we could anticipate a small increase in the number of active COVID cases in the community. Um, as far as we know at this time, none of these new cases are connected. There's no reason to suspect that we have a cluster in our community at this point. Um, and all things considered, the numbers are still low. Um, they're still in the single digits. We know that the virus never left our community. It was never eradicated. Um, but this is a good wake up call for us. Um, how we respond to this and how we react right now um, could have serious implications for our community going forward. Uh, we need to double down on our mask wearing. Uh, we need to remember to practice social distancing um, and doing those things, we can stop the spread. Um, we can keep our numbers uh, to the single digits. Um, these simple activities have really shown that they do work. Um, so it's time for all of us to recommit to that, um, especially as our kids start to go back to school. Um, Maybe. Yes. I'm sorry, can we just remind people too that even if the New York State Department of Health did not stop them, if people went on vacation to one of the states that are deemed high risk, that they need to be quarantining for 14 days. Correct. Thanks. Okay. That's it. Sorry. <laughs> Just a couple of um, other announcements for the top of the meeting. Uh, tonight, the town board is uh, considering a resolution to implement our facade improvement grant program, which is an incentive program uh, that encourages property owners and businesses in Chappaqua and Millwood Hamlets to be able to improve their exterior appearance of their buildings and storefronts. Uh, the program uh, provides direct financial incentives in the form of a 50% matching grant to eligible applicants. Um, and the goal of this program is to uh, create a positive visual impact uh, in our hamlets, uh, to stimulate economic activity, um, and to complement the work that the town wrapped up uh, in November of last year uh, on our infrastructure and streetscape improvements in the hamlet. Um, and so we will be discussing that later this evening. A um, couple of other things. Uh, Census 2020, uh, there, believe it or not, there are only 23 days left um, until the census closes. Um, as of now, that date is September 30th that the, the census closes. Uh, the Census Bureau is now reporting that 60.3% of all non-responsive households have been followed up with by census enumerators, and they continue to do that outreach and that work uh, in our community. Uh, here in the town of Newcastle, we have a response rate of 81%, uh, which means that we are tied currently for second place among municipalities in Westchester County. We're tied with Pelham Manor, um, and we're behind first place Scarsdale, which has a response rate of 81.7%. So, uh, you know, we're doing pretty well, all things considered, but there's still room for growth. So we still have 19% of uh, expected uh, households in, in Newcastle who could uh, still have response to the census. And so we're encouraging everybody to uh, please go online and complete your census questionnaire, my2020census.gov. Um, I'm really optimistic. I think we could still win this thing for Westchester County. Um, I believe Newcastle is the best municipality. I think we have the chance to prove it uh, with our response rate here. Can you create an email, uh, Supervisor Poole, that's maybe my neighbor didn't complete the census at mynewcastle.org and we can... <laughs> Set it out there that people can report their neighbors. <laughs> May work. <laughs> um, right after everybody calls and, and tells some people for not wearing masks um, or for using leaf blowers. 
<laughs> uh, a few more things. Um, the um, Chapqua Interfaith Council is sponsoring a community vigil on Thursday evening. Uh, that's this Thursday, September 10th. Um, I believe that due to the weather forecast and social distancing mandates that the vigil is going to be held online uh, instead of in person. Uh, and that information will be included in the newsletter tomorrow. Uh, but this is an opportunity for the community to come together um, in light of recent uh, hate incidents, hate crimes, and racial uh, incidents that have happened um, here in town. This is an opportunity for us to come together and to reflect um, and to work on healing um, and to, uh, to work on sort of our, our uh, unity and, and hope for the future. So it's a worthwhile goal and I hope everybody will join us on Thursday night for that. Um, and then the only other thing I wanted to mention to everybody, um, there'll be more information in tomorrow's, news, tomorrow's newsletter, so please sign up for the newsletter. Uh, if you haven't already. Uh, but the only other thing I wanted to mention is that this Saturday, September 12th, we have our next confidential paper shredding event, very popular. Um, it'll happen from 10 to 1 at the Recycling Center yard. So please join us for that. If you've been doing a lot of uh, spring, summer, and fall cleaning while you've been trapped in your homes like I have, I've got a big stack of things to, uh, to shred. So uh, it's a great service, so please take advantage of it. Uh, just please note that you do have to uh, wear your masks and you also need to show proof of residence. Um, this is available for Newcastle residents only. So that is my report. Uh, Town Administrator Jill Shapiro. Okay. Um... I know there was one thing that you really wanted to mention. You, wanna, know, you know the details, so I'm just gonna let you handle it. The 9-11, so um, this year, uh, I, I, following in the steps of our very successful virtual 9 uh, Memorial Day Parade, 9-11 ceremony this year will be virtual as well. Um, NCCMC will be broadcasting it much as they did our Memorial Day Parade. Um, and the time for the initial uh, broadcast, I think, is six o'clock. Does that sound right? Sounds right. 6 p.m. on Friday, 9-11. I don't know. <laughs> it is. And now it's so. Okay. Um, following that up, uh, Town Hall actually is uh, now open to the public by appointment only uh, starting today. Um, from 9 to 12, there are appointments available, town clerk's office, development department, recreation, um, justice court. Um, just simply go online. Uh, there's a, a link on the web, on the face homepage of our website um, uh, for appointments. Um, town hall has been open and operating uh, virtually and uh, online uh, since throughout COVID. Uh, staff has been present. So um, we, we urge people to still take advantage of email and uh, telephone calls. This includes for uh, the tax bills that have just gone out. Um, segue into that, uh, the 2020-2021 the school tax bills are due September 30th. Um, if you haven't received the tax bill and you as opposed to your bank are responsible for your tax payments, please call the tax office at 238-4773 or email uh, the tax office at taxes at mynewcastle.org. Um, we still encourage people to use the drop box on the first, first floor of town hall or to mail in your taxes. There's really no reason for anyone to, to come in to drop the, the taxes off. People can uh, mail in their taxes with the date of September 30th, even if they mail it tomorrow or they have to. Absolutely. So we hold post dated checks. So we do this as a, um, a, an option uh, for our residents. We always have. Um, and, uh, you know, just from September 30th or any date before that, um, just send it into the tax office. We will hold the check until the date that you uh, have dated it. So if it's September 30th, we'll hold it until then. We will uh, confirm receipt by either email or phone call. Just tell us what it is that, that you would prefer. The tax office is more than happy to accommodate you. Christina Papes is our town clerk, receiver of taxes extraordinaire. She's right with us and she and Patty Antonucci um, are happy to accommodate you any way they can. Um, also, people should just remember that um, you can also pay your taxes online without charge through our ACH payment. 
but that payment has to be um, activated the, the date that you want it paid. So um, unlike your bank, you can't give us, you know, five days in advance, 10 days in advance. The day you want to pay is the day you'll actually go online from the town's website. And ACH payments um, can be transacted without any charge to you. For credit card payments, there is a service fee. Um, so regarding paving, um, DPW continues with uh, drainage projects throughout town uh, to prepare for the last phase of the 2020 paving schedule, which is set now to, for sometime in late September. And this is all weather dependent. Um, Tertia Brook Culvert Replacement Project is ongoing. We are still waiting for uh, Con Ed to finish um, moving the uh, high voltage cables that run through the present culvert. And uh, they have to take and put them on uh, poles that run through our parking lot. Um, as soon as they're done with that, we'll be able to uh, undergo our project, which is uh, dismantling the existing culvert and then replacing it with prefab pieces. Um, we're hoping this will be finished by the end of September. Is Con Ed, did Con Edison give us a date yet for that? And when, have they, when did they start it? And when did they expect to be finished? Okay, so we told them about it over a year ago. Right. Um, they told us that they have a hard time doing it in hot weather because right. there's only certain days they can work. We told them no problem. That's why we're giving you a year's notice. Right. And yet in August, we once again had some issues um, with the weather and storms delaying the work. So uh, we had originally uh, planned on doing this um, the beginning of August. We've now moved it to, <laughs> we moved it to the end of August. We then moved it to Labor Day and um, here we are. They could have done it any time in the past year that weather permitting, they could have done this over the, over the past year. Right. And, um, and we gave them notice of our date most recently to do it sometime in August. How long before that? Oh, gosh. Um, we, we have been, we have involved Con Ed with um, the, con before we sent out the RFP to do the work, we actually um, told them, you know, they reviewed the RFP with us. We told them the date. We told them when it was returnable. They were with us for the pre-construction meeting when we actually hired the contractor to do the work. So they were aware of all of our deadlines. Um, and so it continues. They are, Con Ed has also been put on notice that if in fact it turns out that we have to uh, erect a pedestrian um, passage to get people from the front parking lot to the back parking lot, which is a six figure expenditure um, that uh, we would be looking for them for reimbursement. We're hoping that that doesn't come to pass. We would just like to be able to replace the scaling culvert. All right. I feel like a trying. Um, and uh, speaking of over a year, over a year ago, uh, we requested permission from New York State DOT to put pedestrian beacons uh, by Langs across 117 and across 133 by the North County Trailway. Um, we have finally gotten the DOT work permit. We are still seeking to get the last of the permits and authorizations from um, DOT that would allow us to have the foundations fabricated and then ultimately have them installed. Um, I'm hoping by the end of the year, I'm optimistic. Um, 2020. And, uh, <laughs> 2020, yes, I'm hoping. And the rest of the stuff I'll let people read in uh, tomorrow's e-newsletter. Good for me. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. So the next thing on our agenda this, this evening is public comment or new business. Do we have anybody who's joined us um, this evening who would uh, like to make a statement? You can just raise your digital hand or type into the chat and we'll open your line. And I'll just note because I do see we have some attendees who are I think here for the uh, for the public hearing on the uh, the leaf blowers, so we'll get to that in just a moment. This is for other topics. Anything else, Christina? Have we had anything come in? Nope. I can see you shaking your head. Carrie, do we have any comments? Nope. On YouTube, we, we received a couple of um, well, quite a few comments this afternoon, but everything's been sent to the board, so you have it all. And it, and that's all related to the leaf blowers, right? Yeah. Yeah. All our comments. Yeah. Okay. 
So in that case, we can go ahead and move forward with our agenda. And the next thing that is on our agenda this evening is our public hearing, uh, the continuation of our public hearing uh, regarding our proposed local law to regulate motorized leaf blowers. Uh, can we get a motion to reopen the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, so this is actually our third um, public hearing, our, our third uh, town board meeting at which we've held a public hearing to uh, get feedback from the, uh, from the public um, on the latest iteration of our leaf blower legislation, which as we um, all know, we have been discussing uh, among the sustainability advisory board, which um, planned, prepared, researched, benchmarked, uh, and uh, drafted the proposal for the leaf blower legislation, uh, as well as the town board for now two and a half years. We have been discussing this in, in various iterations, and we are very close, we hope, <laughs> to the finish line um, on this particular piece of legislation. Um, I, so I'm, I'm actually not going to, uh, to since this is the, the third time we're discussing it now, uh, I'm not going to uh, ask for a, a summary of this, but I'm just going to go ahead and turn it over to anybody who uh, is here this evening who would like to speak uh, to this legislation and provide us with your, your feedback. Again, if you're interested in speaking, you can just raise your digital hand or type into the chat box and I will open up your line. Jeremy Saland. Thank you. The only thing that I would remind my colleagues is that I, I do still believe that we should consider some sort of, in addition to uh, finding a location that will give a discount to the town, some sort of monies to allocate towards reimbursement if you will, to help offset the cost of the electric leaf blower to residents, not to obviously the commercial businesses, but to residents who use them uh, privately. Hi, Steve. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, if I could uh, just say something quickly for the Sustainability Advisory Board. Um, so the SAB originally began studying the detrimental effects of gas power leaf blowers about three years ago. We found that noise pollution, health hazards, and the blowing of dust particles and other airborne pollutants, and of course, GHG emissions are rightfully of great concern to residents of Newcastle. The Newcastle Sustainability Advisory Board recognized that some people oppose the proposed leaf blower for issues of aesthetics, perceived safety risks, and the financial burden, uh, as uh, Jeremy just mentioned, associated with having to purchase an electric leaf blower. For professionals, it may change the way they operate in non-peak times. We expect that in most cases, the changes will be minimal as residents recognize that commonly accepted aesthetics take a backseat to health concerns and the new look of cut grass left on the lawn be uh, becomes the look of people who care about our environment and realize that they get the added benefit of having a healthier lawn. We also understand that many people don't think that the law goes far enough. It's a fair criticism, but one thing we've learned over the years is that there is no perfect law. However, we are confident that with rapidly evolving technology and a growing concern for our environment, this won't be the last time the subject is visited. Finally, some people say that this law will only have a small positive impact. I disagree. First, we must all do our part. Equally importantly, over the last few years, Newcastle has led over and over in sustainability and cleared a path for other municipalities in Westchester County, New York State, and beyond. We can do that here, and by doing so, we'll have an impact that is vastly greater than the size of our town. For those reasons and more, the SAB recommends that you pass the Leaf Blower Environmental Protection Law. Thanks, Steve. Well said. Feels like the culmination of a, uh, a long journey that we've been on together. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So I see that we do have some other attendees. Does anyone have any further comments, feedback for the town board on this legislation? Hi, Maxine. I can okay, see you raising your hand. Maxine, just unmute yourself and you can yep. speak. I think I'm unmuted now, right? We can hear you. You're good. Yeah, um, I, I just agree with with Steve uh, on everything he said. Um, I think that uh, it's really important we get something passed, at least as a start, and hopefully we can amend down the line. But but we there are many towns in Westchester doing this. There are many towns in the country doing this, uh, and it's just something that has to happen. <clears throat> and for all the reasons that Steve mentioned, I mean, it, it keeps going on at, no, you know, we just can't keep repeating the same thing because you guys all know. And uh, it's just, the climate needs to be helped. And, and this is a way to help it down the line for future generations of Chappaqua and Newcastle. And, and you know, locally is global. It's not just here, it, it, it pays its way forward. So it's important that people get a message that this has to be done. And it's in everything that we do, every, things change and they have to change for the better. And I think this is a better way to have our lawns, you know, put into to a nice pattern without affecting the environment as, as badly as the, you know, the, the gas flows do. So just with that, I'm just saying it's important to pass this. Thank you. And thanks to you for being on this journey with us as well. I know for the SAB members in particular, this has been um, arduous at times because of the amount of information and, and the number of sort of requests that the town board has made and additional research that we've, we've wanted and, and asked for. Um, you know, and we've already put you on warning that we have more to come because we've said we want to look into uh, buyback programs or financial incentives and, and ways to, uh, to incentivize people to comply with the local law. Um, so thank you. Well, thank the board for, for consideration and I, and I hope we can get this done um, because it's important. Agreed. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Okay. Whose dog is that? It's not mine. I, you want, I just got a new puppy. <laughs> oh, I was going to where that was coming from. <laughs> she, she, she's nine weeks old and, and she's quite a character. Takes <laughs> after her mom, <laughs> her human mom. I don't know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> what can I say? But uh, a, a nice addition to the family. Oh, boy. You and she's this. also for the lower she, she's telling me you know we got to do something no anyway <laughs> all right thank you sorry about that carrie maybe when COVID is over we'll have to do an outtake reel of the uh <laughs> the best of zoom <laughs> <laughs> sounds good <laughs> so uh anyone else here who would like to uh to speak Okay, so um, my inclination on this is to um, hold the public hearing open um, to allow for additional feedback and comments. Um, and to, uh, to close, I think Jill, we've talked about doing that until next Tuesday, which would give us time then to consider right. all of those comments um, in time for a vote at our next town board meeting, which is the 22nd. The 22nd. So um, we would accept written comments until close of business on the 15th. And then the board would consider a vote on the 22nd. Okay. Okay. Um, Ed, when the resolution's done for this, it's not going to contemplate a buyback program, right? Or any kind of financial incentives from the town. No, I don't Correct. think that you've. No. That would have to be separate. That would be separate if we agree on that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's something that that would be workshopped and something that would be 
And I think there's a little more work to do on that, right? Yeah, yes. I just wanted to make sure because I think that would have an issue with the legislation potentially. So then um, the board would, if the board wants to um, close the public hearing tonight, uh, subject to written comments that need to be received by next week, Tuesday, close of business on September 15th. Yes. Uh, that would be the motion. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So do we not have a, a meeting on the 15th? Am I, uh, we, we, we do. We have a work session. Work yeah. session. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> okay, so that concludes our uh, public hearings and we're on to our resolutions. Great. Um, did you want to talk about the facade program or you just want to go right to the resolution? So we did not hear any feedback from anybody over the week about the uh, about the program. We can certainly talk about it now. I mean, I just wanted to reiterate my concern that it's, I feel like it's a little fiscally irresponsible to dedicate potentially close to a half a million dollars for this. No, it's not a half a million dollars. Well, it's 150,000 over three years, potentially. So that's a half, close yeah, to a half. Yeah. No, that's $150,000 total. Collectively. Yeah. Really? <laughs> the way I read the law, it says it's per three law. years. Under the program? Uh, no, it's not, it's not, it, it, it would be a, the $150,000 would be the cap in the total amount expended uh, and the term would be for three years. I okay, and can you just check that? Because I may just be tired. <laughs> but when I read it today, I thought it said 150 capped per year, and that freaks me out. I'm looking at the first page of the program summary. It says that the, um, the total for both phases, because remember, there are two phases to this, and the amounts of the grant will change and increase specifically in phase two. But for both phases, it's uh, a maximum town expenditure of 150,000. But what about what about the law, not the summary? There, there is no law. It's a program. No, it was like a low. I thought no, I read something. Hold on. Yeah, it's it's the program. See, we, we unfortunately, and and I apologize. I added to the confusion last time when we were remembering this from March. Uh, we thought that the next step was authorization to set a public hearing on a local law. When we went back and looked at it, we realized that it was just a resolution approving a program and the program details are, it's about two to three pages. Yeah, um, yeah that's why we, you know, we circulated it and we asked whether or not anybody had any questions about it because okay, it was Okay, I just wanted list. to confirm because I had, I, then I read it wrong. Yeah, I'm only saying that uh, for first come, first serve basis, with a maximum town expenditure of one hundred fifty thousand dollars for both phases, right? Okay. Let Maybe an earlier version of it wasn't as clear. That that could be. The, the the board may renew the program for two additional years upon adoption of resolution, unless the town spends a maximum of one hundred fifty thousand dollars prior to such date. So. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how I read it wrong, but I. I did. May I just just a point of you know point of inquiry. First of all, or not really inquiry, but a statement. I think a fact is that if we don't use the money, we don't use the money. So it's not as if we're we're locked into spending one hundred fifty thousand dollars. And the first round is is a thousand dollars, right? Um, I'd be matching up to a thousand dollars. Correct. To hit anywhere near that number, and at least on the first stage, we don't have enough businesses to hit that number really to get take out that kind of money. But uh, to Lisa's point, in terms of being fiscally responsible, again, the money's not going to be spent, but maybe we cap it a little bit lower. I, I certainly am not opposed to that, um, at least initially to start, um, whether that's hundred, you know, something that's divisible by three, whether it's 120, whether it's 90 or 75, that I, I don't think we're gonna reach that regardless, but at least it gives a shutoff valve if there is a concern that all of a sudden it does blow up. So I, I'm not opposed to that conversation. Um, but I do support this project fully. 
So if anyone has any thoughts on that. To a certain extent, I don't think it's really that relevant because I don't even think if it's 90,000 or 75,000, we're going to hit that number regardless. But if there's a concern that it could in theory, then we could always come back and add more. If it's that successful, that's a win. If it's that successful, then we're doing something right. Right. I mean, you know, and I mentioned that last week as a possibility because I do think, you know, yeah. if we get $75,000 worth of, of improvements out of this, um, you know, then I think you know, it, it's proven itself to be successful and then we can add more, more money to it. I don't, I don't have an issue with that. The $150,000 we'd put in there as a stopgap, you know, if this thing was wildly successful, that felt like it was a tolerable amount past which, you know, we, we weren't sure we wanted to pour those kinds of resources into this. Um, you know, I, so I, I have no problem with, you know, creating gates or, or whatnot, whereby we would approve additional funding if it's determined to be successful. This money is coming from the Summit Greenfield money. Um, it's not like it's, you know, to a certain extent, money is fungible, but it's not as if we're just pulling this out of our budget. Correct. I certainly support coming down for the sake of comfort, um, although I don't think in the end it's going to be that relevant to $90,000. Um, and if it's that successful and we even come close to that number, we can always expand it. And that's the reason why I picked that, obviously, is it's divisible by three. I'm, I'm not a mathematician, <laughs> but I know that. I mean, I would even go so far as cutting it in half and saying 75. And if it's successful and we want to double it, that would be great. But you have to, you know, I feel like when you're passing legislation, you have to assume that you're going to spend all of it. Um, and then if it gets pulled back, that's good. But um, I, I would even do half with the option to, to renew it again, you know, to, to double those funds. Mm -hmm. So well, let's take the two extreme scenarios, right? One, which is nobody takes it up, right? Then it is money not spent. We don't renew it and that's it. If it is wildly successful and we do wind up spending $150,000, uh, I would assume we'd look back at that, make sure that it was money well spent and determine the next steps. So whether it is not used at all or wildly, su uh, wildly successful, I mean, it's, it, it seems to be doing what we would have expected it to do. Either provide value to our, the, the way our downtown looks and feels, uh, or be money not spent that we wind up using elsewhere at a later date. I mean, but that's, that's the point, is it allows us to reevaluate kind of what the expenditures, anticipated expenditures are afterward, and maybe we do want to use that money for something else. So it allows us to make that determination at the time rather than committing the whole thing now. So my I suggestion know it's not coming is, from the budget, but I think I think in light of the in light of the you know um, right to to your point, what you were about to say, Lisa, um, you know, it's not coming out of our our operating budget, and it's it's not a part of the um, sort of you know penny pinching that we all know that we need to do and that we've committed to taxpayers that we're going to do um, in order to try to keep our, our tax bill um, as flat as possible this year. So understanding that that it doesn't um, have a direct impact on that, at the same time, you know, the the logic that led us to pull it back in, in March, which was, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic and we have unforeseen expenses. And, you know, by now we have a much better handle on what those expenses are. And they're much more foreseen than they were at that time because who knew what was going to happen then? But, you know, the, the same kind of logic that led us to, uh, to pull it back in March, I think still exists today. And I think to the extent that we want to be, um, want to proceed with an abundance of caution and to be as careful as we can um, in, in, you know, sort of as stewards of the town's finances, I think it makes good sense then to to do exactly what you're suggesting, Lisa, and to you know pull it back to 75, and then if we are successful at that gate, um, we can talk about re-upping um, and and increasing the funding to the to the 150 uh, that had felt you know back in February uh, very comfortable, um, and you know hopefully we'll one day feel the same same way about it. So I'm I'm perfectly comfortable with that. As am I. With any luck and with any you know good good success, it'll be we'll need to use that money, and it's going to be a great result. But if not, we're safe. So, and are you able to just edit that out now? I do have a question. We have uh, two phases and three years of program term, and the phases are different. Second phase is intended to get to bigger improvements with the seventy five hundred dollar cap. 
So any little feedback from the board as to where to set that? I don't think we should change the limits based yeah. on the cap. Well, yeah, well, I agree. You don't think you should change the limits based on the cap? It, meaning seventy uh, first phase thousand dollars, second phase seventy five hundred dollars. Those are your limits, whereas the cap is on is in this case seventy five thousand dollars. No, no, not the cap so much, as, but as to when we're going to go from phase one to phase two. Do you want to? Um, phase one to phase two is time to coincide with the um, acceptance of the form base code. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. No change there then. Yeah. Okay. And so realistically, do we think it makes sense to, if it is successful, like how would we, what's the way in which we know like how much we've, you know, exhausted out of the 75,000 and, and how do, when do we decide is, do we need to put that in the language? I'm just curious. Well, won't we know once we see the money's coming out, we'll know that there's been 15,000 in expenditure or, or 80, you know, 40,000 in expenditure. So. I think we would know that way. And then nothing prevents us statutorily from us just having another round. Okay. Well, you I'm can not, renew it at any time. You can up it at any time. You can, it's not law. It, it's not, right. law. You you're, you're passing a program. So you're not bound by, you know, any of the notice requirements of uh, legislation. And then just on the reverse side, if it, you know, if there aren't folks who are, if it, if it, if, it, if people don't take advantage of it uh, and we need the money, I'm making it up, there's a meteor that's crashing in Newcastle and we need, you know, this summit greenfield money, like how is there a, a way in which that we can reverse yeah, it? By resolution, the same okay. way that you approved it. Okay. And it's just to remind everybody, the language in the, the um, program description does talk about the fact that um, we have this gate review. Um, so we talk, we talk about both on an annual basis reviewing the program, but then also in this sort of move, move it transition from phase phase one to phase two, um, sort of having a program review where we, you know, evaluate the success of the program, talk about what's been expended to date, do an, a review of, you know, these are the types of projects that have been completed, um, and then to talk about whether programmatic changes are required. And the idea there was both to, to you know, we can we can both use that to, you know, say, okay, well, we're, we're headed into phase two and we've expended this much money and we think we need to, you know, uh, re-up or, or, you know, make our coffers sort of flush for the program again. Or we can say, you know, um, this, this program hasn't been working and, and, you know, no one's taking advantage of it and we know of no programs that are coming, you know, down the pike. And, and for that reason, we're going to drop it from, you know, 75 to 35 because we think that should cover everything that we need to cover and then we can release, you know, the, our sort of intended, uh, you know, placeholder of $40,000 to, to use towards a different uh, purpose. So I, you know, I think we're, I think we're building in kind of maximum flexibility. And the idea here is to, you know, to the greatest possible extent to sort of be creative and see what works and be honest about what works and doesn't work and to, you know, come up with ideas that can potentially, you know, really help our, our merchants and our property owners at a time where they all need it. They needed it before. They need it even more now. <laughs> all right. So are we ready to move to the resolutions? We're all good? Mm-hmm. Um, I move to approve the payment of claims in the amount of $272,836.22 listed in the summary pre-check writing report and detail voucher detail report each prepared on September 4th, 2020. Checks will be issued and mailed to each claimant listed on Wednesday, September 9th, 2020. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move to adopt the work session minutes from September 1st of this glorious year. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move to authorize the Recreation and Parks Department to, to hire, not fire, Frost Productions and Swank Motion Pictures for an additional outdoor summer movie for a total cost of $4,644.20, showing October 3rd, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move to establish a facade grant improvement program funded from trust account TE 
000.0990.000.000 entitled Chappaqua Crossing, which account was established through payment from Summit Greenfield to undertake improvements to the Chappaqua Hamlet and similar initiatives. Second. All we're in favor? Gonna make, we're going to make this subject to, oh. right? We didn't have the amount in, in this motion, so we didn't know we were making a change. So I just want the, the record to be clear, right? That we're modifying the amount that's in the program description in the packet from 150 to 75,000. Correct. Thank yes. you. Okay. Yes. Yes. Is there yeah. like a term for that? So moved or? <laughs> Are we good? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so be it. <laughs> Is that it? Are we done? So. Um, there's one more. Wait, wait, wait. There was a, uh, a rec. Um, was that sheet of paper? The, um, the rec attendant. Oh, there was an executive session. Yeah, because I, we tend not to do that when we do an executive session. So um, if we could just have a, a motion to approve um, the new position of Ellie Perlov uh, $13 an hour for work at the Art Center. Some moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Before we adjourn, Jill, do we not have September 29th date? We, we do not at the moment. Don't, don't make plans for yourself, though. You do. Maybe something fun on the... Well, fun. <laughs> there, 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 there may be some, uh, some form-based code type things that occur on that date. Gotcha. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know. But right now, we do not have a town board meeting. It's the fifth, uh, fifth Tuesday of the month. Okay. All right. I move to adjourn. All right. Second. Favor. Bye. Bye. Thanks, right. guys. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Have a great have night. Have a good night. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.